Much has changed in the last century, especially when it comes to advertising. The ads we see everywhere, on TV, newspapers, magazines, billboards, or online, all require approval from specific governmental regulatory boards. This is to ensure they aren't overtly offensive and follow a set of defined standards. But back in the day, there were no specified rules or regulations that determined how ads were supposed to be made or what standards had to be upheld. Because of this, we see many ads from back in those unruly days that are either sexist, racist, or downright offensive in some other way. Facts First presents shocking vintage ads that would be banned today. She'll follow you anywhere. This ad from the 1950s depicts a man blowing his Tipolette cigarette smoke directly into a woman's face. The guy behind this ad clearly must have had a few screws loose because obviously there had to be a far better way to market the product. As you can see in the picture, the man is blowing smoke in the lady's face to try to impress her. It's implied that by doing such a dastardly act with this particular brand of smokes, a woman would fall madly in love with you and follow you blindly wherever you went. Evidently, people back then weren't at all concerned with their health or common decency. More doctors smoke camels. The notion that doctors would actually recommend any particular brand of cigarette above any other doesn't get any less puzzling, no matter how many times you've seen this infamous advertisement. When this ad ran, virtually everyone smoked and didn't think twice about it. The fact that the manufacturers of camels thought it would be a good idea to take a survey of what kind of smokes doctors preferred seems outlandish now, but then again, it obviously happened. The ad was banking on the fact that doctors are often seen as the ultimate source of healthcare-related information, and while there probably are a few docs out there that still smoke camels, you can bet they aren't advocating for the practice. Baby Guzzling 7-Up In the modern world, sugar is often seen as one of the supreme evils. Forget trans fats, alcohol, and tobacco. Sugar is often public enemy number one. With that in mind, this ad takes on a whole new shocking level. In it, a baby who has clearly not even started teething is seen gulping down a bottle of 7-Up soda. A woman's hand can be seen holding the bottle, clearly not thinking about the consequences of her actions. The harder a wife works, the cuter she looks. The flippant misogyny reflected in this ad for Pep Vitamins speaks for itself. In the comic panel in the bottom right corner, the husband is shown inquiring how his wife manages to get all the housework done without getting all tuckered out by the end of the day. Of course, she responds by saying that she always gets her vitamins. Men love fannies. We'll just present this one without saying much, but what more could be said? Guys like butts, therefore buy our slinky lingerie. The cure for the common toothache. This ad from the early 1900s promotes the use of cocaine toothache drops produced by Lloyd Manufacturing. Nowadays, such an ad would end up sending someone to jail, but in the early 20th century, cocaine was regularly seen as a magical panacea for all sorts of different aches and pains. Granted, it's also widely known that drugs, regardless of their legality and intended purposes, were being heavily abused by the masses. Get them started while they're young. This ad for Gillette razors should be pretty alarming to anyone with common sense. No matter what angle you look at it, the ad makes you scratch your head and wonder what they were thinking. Sure, it's probably a good idea to start shaving early, but do you really think literal babies should be handling razor blades? Once again, this was long before the days of class action lawsuits and public outcry over such things. The perfect Christmas gift. Tis the season to be locked and loaded. This ad for Colt Firearms suggests that the perfect way to bring in the holiday season is by gifting yourself a brand new handgun. Now, as we know, Americans love guns, but there's something a bit unnerving about depicting guns as being the ideal things to set underneath the old Christmas tree. Innocence is sexier than you think. This ad for Love's Cosmetic is pretty startling. Anyone who looks back at it has to stop and wonder what the heck companies were thinking. How in the world is sexualizing a literal child going to sell deodorant? Even by today's standards, this is disgusting and unnecessary. Show her it's a man's world. Ah, good old-fashioned sexism, just like Dad used to love. This ad for Van Heusen branded neckties depicts a woman on her knees serving her man breakfast in bed. As she presents the food to what's presumably her husband, it almost looks like she's worshipping him like some sort of god. But why is the guy wearing a dress shirt and tie in bed? Second of all, is he wearing pants? And last but not least, why are his hands behind his head? It makes you wonder if there's another guy standing just out of frame holding him up with a loaded gun that he purchased for himself last Christmas. 
or in gentle. If your baby doesn't like shaving or drinking 7-Up, maybe they'll enjoy the smooth, cool flavor of a Philip Morris cigarette. On second thought, we can't even joke about that. Still, this ad from the 1950s shows a mother gently cradling her infant with a pack of cigarettes right next to them. The ad's text suggests that young mothers and smoking go hand in hand. These aren't just cigarettes, they're apparently gentle cigarettes. Gentle like a mother's tender embrace. Flippin' Style Hair Dryer The text of this ad says that the hair dryer they're selling is fun even if you can't use it. Panasonic drives the point home by showing a woman who's bald. The hair dryer is so great you'll love it even if you don't have hair, says Panasonic. Way to insult everyone who's ever suffered from hair loss. I guess they figured they wouldn't be losing too many prospective customers from that demographic. World's Largest Lemons In this ad for Quick Way Bar Mix, it's stated that only the world's largest, ripest, and juiciest lemons are used in the manufacturing of the product. See what they did there? Fairy Soap In this ad, a young white girl is asking her little black friend why her mother doesn't wash her with fairy brand soap. Obviously, it's being implied that the white girl doesn't realize that the other girl's skin tone isn't a result of her being dirty. The racist implications are clear and appalling. Let's move on. Jeans that turn a dude into a stud. Yup, according to this ad for his brand jeans, only real men wore these bell-bottomed bad boys. If you don't like it, then you might as well go off and get yourself a pair of those girly Levi's. Keep her where she belongs. This ad for Weyenberg shoes is a slap in the face to anyone fighting for women's liberation. Not only is it essentially saying that women need to learn to stay in their lane, but it also implies that any woman worth her salt will fall for a man donning a pair of these gaudy things. It's nice to have a girl around the house. This ad for men's trousers shows a man stepping on a woman's face. Not only that, but the woman in question doesn't even have a human body. The message seems to be that women should be tamed by brute force and animal magnetism. The only way, evidently, this can be accomplished is by wearing a pair of synthetic polyester slacks. A woman can open it? The running joke back in the day was that women would always ask men to help open things like tin cans, pickle jars, and pesky ketchup bottles. Alcoa Aluminum tapped into this sexist sentiment by marketing a bottle that even a poor little woman could open all by herself. Ironically, just a few years prior, women were making tanks, guns, and bombs for the war. If your husband ever finds out, what better goes with your morning cup of joe than a nice dose of domestic violence? This ad for Chase and Sanborn coffee pretty much gives men the go-ahead to beat their wives if they dare purchase an inferior grind. Elliot's White Veneer While many cosmetic companies of the day promoted how their soaps could whiten dark skin, this ad for white paint takes the concept to a whole new level by implying that it's perfect for completely covering up black skin. Everything about this ad is disgusting, from the racist depictions of the two characters presented to the incredibly dangerous idea of coating oneself with a lead-based paint. Reduce Psychic Tension Hey ladies, has serving your husband tirelessly, appeasing his every waking need got you feeling stressed? There's a pill for that. Just pop a volume and let your worries melt away. You'll be back to folding shirts and cooking dinner in no time, apparently. Now it's time to hear from you. Which 20th century ads do you find the most offensive? Do you think today's ads are any better? Let us know in the comments section below.